Miss Shine. I am going to show you a little bit about um, how I make these drawings. Um, I actually have a really bad tremor, which makes it very difficult for me to draw, like, you know, just where I to just take a paintbrush and do that. It makes it really difficult. So I have a different method that I use instead. So the first thing I'm going to do, what you're going to do all the time in like Photoshop is you're going to oh, get a new layer, right? So I like to pick a color that's in the picture but is also going to be a good contrast with the person. And so I'm picking that light back there. And then I'll find my selection tool, just a regular polygon. And I usually start with the eyes. One thing that is pretty important is that you don't worry about drawing what you think you're supposed to draw. You draw what you actually see. Um, and I like to go for areas of really high contrast. So there, there, there are places where you'll be like, wow, I really should be drawing, for example, the bottom of this eye. I can just hit delete with my polygon tool if I if I make a line I don't like. I really need to draw, for example, this line right here. I am not going to draw it because I don't see it. I do, however, see this fold. So I'm going to draw that. Um, another thing that we tend to think is really important to draw is the pupil. And in a lot of situations, you can't even see it. What you can see, almost always, is the light reflecting in the iris. And sometimes it'll be like off to the side, and sometimes it'll be in the middle, and sometimes it will be your pupil or the pupil, like right now. Um, but I actually think that's really important. And depending on how close up the person is, sometimes I can make it so that you can actually see the their irises, sometimes it's just all black, but it's fun when you can color in the person's eye color, right? So, eyebrows are another place where you just want to like trace the outline, right? But that is not going to make, like, we don't have perfect, you know, just swipes across our face there. So then what I do is a refine edge, and I have it smooth 27, I don't know, the percent or whatever, um, smooth it, I don't know what that actually is, 100% um, contrast, and currently I'm working with shifting the edge 27%, shifting it out. Um, actually, I'm, it's really important to be consistent with these things, so I'm, cropping them all, as you'll notice, this is, look at that, there's somebody else in the picture that I cropped out. Um, I want to make them all 8 by 10 at 240 um, dots per inch, and that makes it so that we can be kind of consistent, and we don't have, you know, like, I like consistency. I think it <laughs> is helpful. So this hat um, was actually given to me by my parents when I was 16, on my 16th birthday. And I think that it is in pretty good shape for a 20 year old hat. <laughs> um, or not. I don't know, I still feel like a teenager a lot of times, so not really sure how I got old. So once again, these little details that you see, the, the high contrast areas, those are really where you, you're going to want to focus. When you think about it, like that's what your eye pays attention to. And here's a cool thing, sometimes people have little shapes in their eyes. I actually have some freckles in my eyes. And it adds some visual interest to show those things.
think I said that I like to do um, things kind of like, you know, like one eye together. I like to do the nose all in one piece because that one, way when you do the refined edge with the smoothing, oops, that's one benefit of a polygon tool is <laughs> you mess up, you just undo that one thing. Um, anyway, but. That way it kind of stays as a consistent unit. You you have your, um, see this is dangerous, I'm going a long way. I usually like to select small amounts and then, you know, like add to them because that is a little bit safer. You can always add more and when I accidentally double click because I'm a weekly bunny. Um, I don't have all that. I have done that so many times where I like do a long selection and then I double click accidentally and it breaks my heart. So, um, again, just going for high contrast areas. And there are definitely some areas where, like, Oh, I would prefer to not draw those chins, and and there are I've practiced a lot of these, and you gotta draw them because that's what the person looks like. Um, if you don't draw the person, you tend to you know it's it's you're not accurately representing your person. I have, I think uh, Sunita Williams has big, big smile marks like these. I was so afraid of them and I was trying to avoid them and like it made her look so weird. But when you actually just Draw what's there, and that's really the thing. Like sometimes you're gonna discover things about people. I can't tell you how many times. Like, oh no, who was it? There's somebody who um, actually outlined her lips inside. Like her lips were wider than she made them look with her lipstick. Um, you can tell some like. Some people will wear, um, I don't know. lipstick is a big one that you'll you'll see, um, and earrings too. It really gives me an opportunity to pay attention to all these tiny details, and it's it's kind of fun. I mean, obviously, I'm enjoying this so much. Be doing it for money. Um, and I have this mole here. I was raised being told that it was a beauty mark, makes any profit. That's what they would always say. And then um, I could always got airbrushed out of yearbook pictures and stuff like that. And I think I, I nobody ever said anything to me at that time. Oh, and so when I use a light color. I have to make a fill here. Oh, ah. Come on. So that I can kind of like turn it on and off. Alright, so I don't have to be just black. Okay. So that way when I look. It's like, oh yes, I do look like somebody who pulls out her eyelashes. to do the line that is most powerful so like a lot of times ah, escape if you accidentally start a line you don't want. but like okay so where where this line 
meets my neck. I'm not going to do the neckline separate from the hood. I'm going to do the hood there because that's what's a more powerful line. Um, I like to get really up close with the hair. I don't actually have a lot of strands available here to work with, but um, I really like to find all bunches of high contrast areas because if you just like do the outline of the hair, it it looks like people are wearing like helmets or scarves. In the art. Um, this hat here, I am gonna take a riot break here for a minute because I'm, I'm gonna speed up what I do with this hat. Um, this is an example of where I will I want to do a lot of selection before I um, do the refined edge. And so, what I will do is um, make a new layer, and then, so, I'll like, do a little bit here, and then I will, without refining, I'll do fill selection, okay? and. Like that, so I'm not gonna keep it, but I'm gonna do a, a little bit where I'm not gonna make you watch it in real time, but in the meantime, you can see there is a me. Okay. So now that I have all of those little details selected that I want, I'm going to take the selection tool and select similar and refine edge. Woo! I'm making my computer do a lot of work right now. So and then I hide that layer and I fill this layer. Sometimes I can see, like, okay, right here, yeah, I need to draw that line in because when I look it doesn't really make a lot of sense. That is the tricky balance, right? So, yeah, that makes more sense. Um, and then sweatshirt. I actually really enjoy folds of clothing. Um, there are so many neat contours to follow. Um, so, I'm 
might be quiet here for a minute. I am not gonna do all these details for this little tutorial. I also think that, like, it's a hoodie. And if I put in too much detail, it's gonna get confusing. There are definitely, like... <clears throat> One thing that's really cool, I think, is that we can see the shape of things. Like, you can see the shape of a person's body from the folds. Like, there is not a separation line there, but you can tell that there's a bend because that's how clothing move, moves when there's a bend, right? And you can tell that I am holding my arm out to take the selfie because we've got this big shadow here, right? But I'm not gonna do like all that stitching. This, this is a really common shape that I find. Just trying to be quick here because like I said you like got the what are those called the strings those guys in there um, by the way I love hoodies they are my favorite um, <laughs> I did those challenge like the 2009 to 2019 challenge wearing a hoodie in both of those pictures. I like looking back in pictures of me. No, I'm not saying I like looking. I actually, like many women, have a hard time with the way that I look. But no, when I was looking back at images of myself over the years, it always cracks me up because I wear hoodies a lot. And I really especially love gigantic hoodies. Like I have this 3XL dark green hoodie. It is the best. And I... There, there are these holes in the sleeves from where I actually like, pull the sleeves up. It's... I, it is not a leaving the house piece of clothing. It is definitely a piece of clothing that stays at home. But it's a piece of clothing that I really, really like. Ah, come back. And I tend to, um, every so often I'll cut my hair up really short, and then I'll grow it back out really long. I actually, um, the most recent time that I cut it all off, um, I donated 20 inches to Loxa Love. So then I'm actually going to change this from the polygon to magnetic lasso. I'm just going to trace my outline. making things easier. Okay, we're gonna try that again. Let's start from this side. Um, yeah, I just want to go on the outside of this stuff, and really, I am not all that concerned about precision for this, because this is just to create a filter. with this coloring book. Um, <clears throat> I have these just fun spider graph shapes that I enjoy. I actually don't have a lot of fun coloring in large spaces. I don't enjoy that. So I like all kinds of little intricate details. I just made boatloads of spider graph shapes and then I scanned them. I did the um, refine edge thing and um, then so that's the refined edge and then I did the um, layer effect tool to give it the black outline that's actually a stroke. Um, but I go through I go through and I turn to up just like 
pick the ones that I like. Um, and I'll move them over there. Like this one, I think. Okay. The only downside is that I um, I keep using the same shapes because I really like them. Like I really like that. Looks like stained glass to me. I think it's pretty. But then I take these guys and hmm. those seem smaller than they usually are. But then I'll just kind of like move them so that they're visible. And the reason that I have that white back there is so that if it goes behind the person, then it's not gonna cause issues. Then, one more solid fill layer. And this is just so that when I um, save it as a PNG, then I have that background and they're not getting transparency that like, when you upload it in certain places it will um, turn black. And so, there's me.